A friend of mine showed me how to use Google Maps, and I'm sure you've seen it. It lets you use satellite images to look at locations all over the world. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. Since then, I really don't leave the house that often. It's difficult, and the idea of seeing a car drive by makes me feel lightheaded. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world, almost like being there. I mean, I could virtually walk down the streets, and it was it almost felt like I was actually there. I became instantly hooked. It gave me a real eye to the world. I could go to almost any major city, and I did. I'd seen streets in China, Japan, Germany, England, so many places. I'd even gone to tourist attractions like the Great Barrier Reef and Dracula's Castle. My favorite was to go to random places in major cities and see how many people and animals I could find. The faces of the people were always blurred to protect their privacy, but it was still enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their lives, walking like it was no big deal. She must have good taste, I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed a gray bag she carried on a gray and purple shoulder strap. She was walking in this relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet if I could have seen her face, I would see that she was smiling, and I began to feel a little sad. I let my hands fall into the arms of my wheelchair and looked at her for a minute. I wish I could have actually been there, walking so carefree. But that wouldn't happen. You know, until I died, I was stuck in this chair. <sighs> I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo. I mean, enough of this for tonight. I turned off the computer and then went to bed. The next day I had gotten up early decided to look around Paris, and Paris was always fun. I liked the look of the city, with all the old beautiful buildings and so many people to watch. I randomly zoomed into an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings and a few small shops and an old tan brick church. Ahead was an intersection and dozens of people walking by. A balding businessman walked quickly past, looking back at an old woman, hair covered with a scarf carrying a large purse, a curvy woman in black pants that were too tight stared into a store window, and two women led a group of small children around a corner. I spun the view around a few more times, and then saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench in the bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman with her feet stuck in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing a pair of red sneakers like my own, and I was startled for a moment as I noticed the black pants, white t-shirt, and black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her head, and a gray bag sat on the bench beside her, the shoulder strap hooked over her shoulder. This is crazy, I thought. I mean, it can't possibly be the same woman. This is a different country. Hell, it's a different continent, even. How could it be her? I mean, this was stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. They were taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. I mean, she could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell if it was even the same person. Brown hair was probably the most common hair color in the world, let's be serious. Those red sneakers were something I'd purchased online, I'm sure a million other people's do. I shook my head and went to fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street as usual, and it looked pretty empty. There were brick buildings lining the streets, looking more like factories than anything else. There were also empty lots full of long grass and piled gravel. There wasn't really much to see at all, to be honest. There was a line of motorbikes and a car with two German flags sticking up from it. And after more searching, I found one kid. He looked like he was dressed for school, a jacket thrown over his bag, and he was intently looking at some kind of mobile device. I was disappointed. I started to leave, but then I caught something out of the corner of my eye. I turned the view, and there they were. Those damned red sneakers. She was standing on a street corner next to some kind of signpost. She had a hand on the post, looking down the street, as if waiting to cross. And I stared in shock. How could she be here too? Even if she was traveling, there is no way I would find her every time. Even finding her in Paris was one heck of a coincidence, but this? I mean, this had to be crazy. I mean, was this some kind of joke? Has Google decided to play a prank on its users that use their product so much? I mean, it would have been a great joke. I did a quick search looking for a note about a woman that shows up like Waldo, and there was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can find on Google Maps, but none of them had mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. And that's crazy. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created some Google Maps hallucination for myself? Leaving the Berlin image on my screen, I sent a text message to a friend asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman, and then I waited, hand sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when my phone beeped with a return text message ten minutes later. The text read, I see the lady you're talking about in Berlin. 
I didn't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of game or what? Are you okay? I didn't respond. It said returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris, and there she was. She was there, but it was different. She no longer sat on the bus stop bench in Paris. She was standing in front of it, looking for something in her bag. In Tokyo, she was blocks away, squatting down to pet that calico cat. <sighs> Who was she? I mean, what was actually even happening? I switched the map to Brussels. It was another city street. It was lined with old-looking buildings, with shops on the ground level and what I guess was apartments above. I quickly scanned the streets, which were empty, other than a stocky woman in a bright blue sweater. I did a second sweep, she wasn't there, and I sighed in relief. I mean, I couldn't believe I was even getting worked up over this. It was nothing but a quince it Oh no. There was a building at this point, of a fork in the road, white with the black ironwork framed balconies jutting from the second floor. I hadn't seen her as I had been looking at the sidewalks, and there she stood, standing on the balcony, her head tilted in the direction of the camera, almost like she was coyly looking towards me. My breath caught in my throat. I switched to Sydney. She was leaning against the wall, inside the doorway of a bright blue Carrick's pharmacy building. London showed her getting ready to step onto a red double-decker bus, her head turned to look over her shoulder. She was everywhere I looked. She stood on a brick sidewalk on a bridge in Venice. She walked across a yellow barred crosswalk in Zurich. And in Hong Kong, she stood between a wing lung bank and a McDonald's adjusting the strap on her bag. In each picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. My heart grew terrified and I couldn't really catch my breath. I wasn't sure what to do. I couldn't call the police. I mean, should I even send the screenshots to Google? I clenched my fists tightly and closed my eyes. I mean, who was she? Was she following me? Was I following her? I wish I could see the expression on her face. Know what she saw when she looked back at me. I want to get out of the chair and run. Why is it that the only thing that made me feel free again was the thing that made me feel even more trapped? I had to know. I typed in the name of my town and zoomed onto a random street. And it was a couple of miles from my house. The gates of the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight. Despite it being night there, there she was. She was, she was there. She was only a few miles from my house, standing under the ironwork arc that stated the name of the park. She looked directly at the camera, directly at me. I felt like I might throw up. She was near me, and she was watching me. She was coming for me. Now, what did she want? I typed in the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. The parking lot was full of cars, and there were a few blurred out children in the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or on the sidewalks, not hiding between the buildings or standing in the playground. I even scanned each of the cars behind the bushes and each of the blurred windows. She was not there. I curled tightly around myself and lay my head down on the desk. The place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyways. I mean, I would never use Google Maps again. I could never see her again. She could stay at the park for all I cared. I smiled to myself and was surprised to find a tear slipping down my face. I'm safe. I'm safe. And as I kept saying that, there was a knock at the door, and a chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked up to my computer that showed me it was at the front door, which made it easier for me with my mobility issues. I slowly reached for the control to show myself who was outside, but my hand trembled furiously. As I touched the control, I realized my mistake. The last of Google's images that I'd seen had only shown the outside of the building just the outside. I looked at the screen and saw a woman in a white t-shirt, black pants, and black hooded jacket and carrying a gray bag with a purple and gray striped shoulder strap. Of course, there were those red sneakers as well. She looked directly at the camera, her face still a complete blur. As I tried to stifle a scream, she raised a hand and knocked loudly on my front door. And ladies and gentlemen, that is Satellite Images. Now, this creepypasta interests me a lot because, of course, it focuses on the IRL versions of uh, internet spooky stories, I guess you could say, when it really brings, like, real-life uh, things such as Google Maps. And might I say, it's kind of difficult to make something like Google Maps uh, something to fear. But hey, you know, we've seen it over the years with some weird stuff being captured, and that's why this creepypasta hits me close to home, because it's something that I could see potentially kick off in reality. Now, for those of you who've really seen the creepy parts 
of uh, Google Maps, Google Images, whatever you want to call it, Street View, Satellite View, whatever Google wants to really brand it as, uh, you will find some really interesting stuff. There's many articles out there you can hit up that will show you some creepy imagery out there available. There are some people dressed up in bird masks that uh, are just standing in front of a Google Street View camera that's making its rounds just to send back to home server and basically uh, be the Street View um pictures you can look at, a bunch of uh, pentagram symbols that you can find from the sky, crop circle type deals, and amongst many other things. So this is not stuff that's out of the realm of imagination. This is stuff that actually happens, and it's not terribly difficult to conceive why some people can do it. I mean, some people figure out exactly what rounds a Google vehicle is about to make. Uh, the ones that are used basically to capture the street view cameras, they stand in front of it, act all weird, and bam, that shows up on Google Images for a a lengthy amount of time. You know, you can even go to something like, say, the uh, the actual aerial view where you can, you know, make a little crop circle if you have enough time, patience, and money. And eventually, when the satellite makes its rounds, if you figure out when it's taking a photo by any means, it's going to capture that, it's going to send it out to the Google Maps servers, and bam, there you go. Your uh, meme is there for a good long time. People are eventually going to find it because Google Maps, some people just explore that shit till the days are done. Because, to be honest, it always evolves and it always uh, changes because of stuff like this, too. And amongst the regular interval of capturing topology and capturing photographs of aerial views and street views as well. So, aside from my Google Maps uh, briefing over there and telling you how the system really works... Let's go back to the story. The story involves around our protagonist looking through a bunch of cities, which I'm sure we've all done to an extent. You know, we've all street viewed a bunch of cities that we've never really been to just to see what it's like. Or sometimes I do it when I'm going to a place that I've never traveled and I want to just see what the streets are like, get a, get a feel for the location I'm in before I actually head out there. Just, just what I do. So regardless, when you do that, all right, We've all, we've all toured around the world using this kind of stuff, or if anything, we use Google Earth, things like that, and if you haven't, I'd recommend giving it a try. Now, this person street views multiple cities, multiple locations, and always comes across this one lady in red sneakers. And at first, it's kind of creepy, and a couple more times throughout the story, I was just thinking it's a really, really, really bored individual with a fair amount of cash just traveling around the world who's figured out the schedule for every Google Street View update and is just taking photos around. But by the time you get to the end, I feel like that's when it sort of starts to kill itself a little bit, when it when it, when it, when it just becomes hilarious in how many places this woman shows up, and at the end, when she's knocking on your door, or waiting to completely kill this individual, which let's assume that's what happened or he was taken into some Google camp or something like that for exploring too far. I don't really know. But the story genuinely just goes from that point on. It's not terribly long and it sticks to its own uh, agenda. It basically sticks to its own uh, spooky cause, I guess you could say, if anything. And just sticks with that throughout it all. And all you really get over here is a woman that just happens to be rolling around Google Images. And I guess the moral of the story is if you hang around Google Images for far too long than you're supposed to and just really get sucked into the world, maybe the world might just suck you right into it. I don't I don't, I don't, don't really know if that's the right way to go about it, but that's really the message I got from this. The lady basically stalks you around, and the thing is, it's not like the person really relies on this being a hallucination because friends themselves can see it. Now, I feel like when you make a story like this, it's almost required that you give some form of screenshots to the people that are reading it because I know media can always add to a story. Sometimes it can even take away if it's not done properly. Don't get me wrong on that. But if you're bringing something like Google Images, it can be very advised that you at least learn some photoshopping and photoshop a, a woman into that. Uh, otherwise, then without, because we all can easily fire up Google Images, Google Maps on another tab. If you don't give us any media to go off of, then instantly, at about 40% of reading this, you're just going to be like, no, I don't think this could ever happen in reality. And that's sort of the downside of how the story really plays itself out. Because while it is a decent story, I feel like it really, really needed media. And as far as the actual story went, it was a little bit outlandish by the time you got to the end. But at the end of the day, I'd be lying if I'd said I wasn't at least somewhat intrigued and partially spooked by the story. And I think in that regard, it has done its job, but it could really use some media. Ultimately, though, I do want to ask what you think about the story and what would you change to make it better? This has been Satellite Images and another episode of Creepypasta as part of Haunted Gaming. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.